Hi again. I am going to be reading a sonnet a day inspired by Patrick Stewart's reading of a Shakespearean sonnet each day. This will be a gospel sonnet again by Ralph Erskine. We're now in part three, The Believer's Riddle, or The Mystery of Faith. The preface showing the use and design of the riddle. I hope you enjoy. Reader, the following enigmatic song does not to wisest naturalists belong. Their wisdom is but folly on this head. They here may ruminate, but cannot read. For though they glance the words, the meaning chokes. They read the lines, but not the paradox. The subject will, however the phrase be blunt, their most acute intelligence surmount, if with their natural and acquired sight they share not the evangelic light. Great wits may rouse their fancies, rack their brains, and after all their labor lose their pains. The, their wisest comments were but witless chat, unapt to frame an explication pat. No unregenerate mortal's best engines can write unriddle these few rugged lines, nor any proper notions thereof reach. Though sublimated to the highest stretch, masters of reason, plodding men of sense, who scorn to mortify their vain pretense, in this mysterious theme might plod their fill. It overtops the top of all their skill. The more they vainly guff and scorn to read, the more it does their foolish wit exceed. Those sinners that are sanctified in part may read this riddle truly in their heart. Yea, weakest saints may feel its truest sense, both in their sad and sweet experience. Don't overlook it with a rambling view, and rash oppose it neither good nor true. Let heaven's pure oracles the truth decide, renounce it if it can't that test abide. Noble Bereans soon the sense may hit, who sound the divine depth of sacred writ. Not by what airy carnal reason saith, but by the golden line of heaven spun faith. Let not the naughty phrase make you disprove the weighty matter that disproves your love. High strains would spoil the riddle's grand intent to teach the weakest, most illiterate saint that Mahaname is his proper name in whom two struggling hosts make bloody game, that such may know, whose knowledge is but rude, how good consists with ill, and ill with good, that saints be neither at their worst nor best, too much exalted or too much depressed. This paradox is fitted to disclose the skill of Zion's friends above her foes, to difference but light that heaven transmits some happy fools from miserable wits, and thus, if blessed, it may in some degree make fools their wit and wits their folly see. Slight not the riddle, then, like jargon vile, because not garnished with a pompous style. Could the author act the lofty poet's part, who make their sonnet soar on wings of art? He on this theme had blushed to use his skill, and either clipped his wings or broke his quill. Why, this enigma climbs such divine heights, as scorn to be adorned with human flights. These gaudy strains would lovely truth disgrace, as purest paint deforms a comely face. Heaven's mystery, mysteries are above art's ornament, immensely brighter than its brightest paint. No towering literature could ever outwit the plainest diction fetched from sacred writ, by which mere blazing rhetoric is outdone, as twinkling stars are by the radiant sun. The soaring orators, who can with ease strain the quintessence of hyperboles, and clothe the barest theme with purest dress, might here expatiate much, yet say the less. If with the majestical simplicity of scripture oratory they dis disagree, these lines pretend not to affect the sky, content among inglorious shades to lie, provided sacred truth be fit fitly clad, or glorious shine even the through the dusky shade. Mark then, though you should miss the gilt gilded strain, if they a store of golden truth contain, nor underrate a jewel rare and prime, though wrapped up in the rags of homely rhyme, though haughty deists hardly stoop to say that nature's night has need of scripture day, yet gospel light alone will clearly show how every sentence here is just and true. Expel the shades that may the mind involve, and soon the seen contradiction solve. All fatal errors in the world proceed from want of skill such mysteries to read. Vain men the double branch of truth divide, hold by the one, and flight the other side. 
Hence, proud Arminians cannot reconcile freedom of grace with freedom of the will. The blinded papist won't discern nor see how works are good unless they justify. The legal, thus legalists distinguish not the odds between their homebred righteousness and God's. Antinomianists, the saints perfection plead, nor duly sever between them and their head. So Sinians won't these seeming odds agree how heaven is bought and yet salvation free. Bold Arians hate to reconcile or scan how Christ is truly God and truly man, holding the one part of Emmanuel's name, the other part outrageously blaspheme. The sound in faith no part of truth control, heretics own the half, but not the whole. Keep then the sacred mystery still entire, to both the sides of truth do favor bear, not quitting one to hold the other branch but passing judgment on an equal bench. The riddle has two feet, and, were but one, cut off, truth falling to the ground, were gone. Tis all a contradiction, yet all true, and happy truth, if verified in you. Go forward, then, to read the lines, but stay, to read the riddle also by the way. Thanks for listening. Lord willing, I will see you next time, and we will start the riddle, section one. Hope you enjoy.